Hello people, welcome back. We will be creating another small project this time on the concept of deep learning. So we are creating a cats versus dogs classifier or say identifier. So when you are giving an input of an image, so uh, of a cat or a dog, then the uh, project should identify whether it is an image of a cat or if it is an image of a dog. So deep learning concepts are simple so project. We will be using Keras, we will be using uh, CNN libraries. So yes, let's initiate. We are using Google Collaborator this time for our local um, storage Jupyter notebooks. We are going on Collaborator because simple is a project hai and we will learn something new on this platform, uh, local files. So let's jump on Collaborator. I am making a new notebook here. Yes, so I have created a new notebook and let's hop on to Kaggle before we start coding. So, um, if I go to Kaggle, I search for cats versus dogs uh, data sets. I get a lot of them, out of which I am choosing this one. Uh, 102 recurrence aspect. So, if you go, if you use Jupyter Notebook for such projects, you will see that the data set size is 1 GB. So, instead of, instead of uh, you know investing a lot of storage in 1 GB data set, I am going to collaborate it and I will show you something fun that you can do on Collaborate that won't be possible on Jupyter Notebook. So instead of downloading this entire data set, uh, I'll just go to my profile uh, of Kaggle. I'll go down in the settings and I'll go to account settings. Uh, in the account settings, if you scroll down, you'll see API option and just hit on create new token or create new API. And once you hit on create new token, you will be getting a file uh, somewhere like this Kaggle.json. So this JSON file uh, download in the system mein, and you, do, you go to this folder from Golab and upload this file here. So first let the kernel uh, connect. Okay. Nahi, this won't happen. Let the kernel connect uh, really. and then we can go to, uh, now we can upload the JSON file here. So if I hit upload now, uh, now if I upload uh, yes, it will show that the, you know if you refresh this environment, the files will be disappeared. The statistically storage name, um, dynamic storage. Okay, so my JSON file is uploaded. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll go to my data set again on Kaggle. Uh, let's go back to data sets. Let's research for cats and dogs. Okay. Again, uh, let's go to this data set. Abhi, if you see, uh, hit on the triple dot and you can copy the API here. So, copy this API command and hit an exclamation mark and then copy paste your command here. Now, if you uh, run this, your data set will be directly downloaded on the environment instead of you know using the entire 1 GB uh, data set download <laughs> or fairly after. Okay, so again, let's give uh, before I run this command, let's give exclamation mkdir which is make directory and agega write this snippet of code. So, what this will do is basically it will create a directory for you where you can go ahead and use your data set. So, I have used, uh, I'm just renaming it first for a new cats and dogs IP and be okay. Now let's uh, copy the snippet, make directory cp, kaggle.json and once you run this, now you can run your API command. Uh, okay. Once you are done running the API command, you will see uh, these files have been downloaded to your static environment. Uh, here. Okay, so on your environment, the files are downloaded now. Uh, okay, now let me just import the libraries that we need. So, let's import. Okay, before we import the libraries, uh, what we'll need to do is key is up the files download where these are in zip format. So, we'll have to unzip this. So, let's import zip file uh, zip underscore ref and zip file dot zip file and you just give the path of your zip file and you just write an extract command on the uh, location so content content folder me you will have this file unzip okay once you run this command you will have the unzip file and now just import our libraries 
So I am quoting TensorFlow as TF and from TensorFlow import Keras and from Keras let's now import a sequential right yes sequential and yes now I just need to import some layers so from Keras dot layers I'll import the necessary layers uh, dense on 2D I uh, need max cool 2D again and I'll just import flatten. We'll need more layers in the future, but uh, just as a requirement here, we'll import those layers. For now, uh, what we'll need is generators. So we can basically use generators to create batches. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll use keras.utils and I'll use image dataset from directory. So image dataset from directory and I'll use all the attributes, uh, directory and the directory path. I'll add labels as info and I'll go ahead and add labels mode as int and I'll need batch size as 30 and assume I, I mean you can't assume all images have same sizes in the data set so what I'll do is I'll do image size 6 by 256 so all the images in our data set have like same data sizes okay once i run this command i will go ahead and run this okay i have some error i will just remove the errors yes so once you run this command you will find there are 20,000 files belong, belonging to two classes 5,000 files belonging to two other classes Okay. okay, once you are done with the generators, you are pretty much sorted because you uh, image data set. So basically the entire snippet that we use in generators is you know you do your batch sizing, module tracings, etc. And generators may also I have tried uh, using two methods which is uh, testing and validation. So if you see uh, generators kind of code there, sorry training and validation. So there is one snippet for training and one where it validates your training okay so once you are sorted with this you will find your files belonging to different classes now i'll do normalization i'll we just need a small snippet of code where we have this uh, process going on where you take one image uh, that and a label of that image and then that goes into the process uh, into uh, imaging and labeling and then it comes back to train, uh, training data sets uh, snippet uh, you basically do the validation of thing uh, of the uh, selected image and label and then the process keeps repeating the image goes again uh, with the label and it goes with this step where image is divided by 255 and yes once you are done with the normalization process we will uh, go ahead with this data set so I will have to create this model uh, CNN model so for that I'll do, I'll use model equals sequential and uh, let's do model dot add and we'll use the less <coughs> we'll use conf 2d and let's do 32 kernel kernel size 3 by 3 so yes 3 comma 3 we'll go with padding valid and activity as relu for now, uh, sorry, activation for relu right now, and we'll go with input shape uh, 2 to 6 by 2 to 6, comma 3. And yes, now I'll just add all other model codes here uh, with our paddings, validities. Okay, now batch normalization here is not a recognized keyword. So, again, uh, in the code where we defined our layers for Keras. I'll add batch modification there. Uh, so once I do that, uh, it will be recognized. Batch normalization uh, is now recognized. Even max pooling 2D and if you find out any other keywords are missing, I will just add it here so we don't have any problems in the future. Now what I'll do is I'll do model.summary 
and we'll get a summary of our models that we have developed right now and you'll see the total parameters we got okay mm. now let's move ahead with model dot uh, compile we'll compile this and we'll fit the model okay so compilation will go optimizer let's go with adam uh, we'll go with loss which is binary and let's do binary cross and profi and we'll go with matrix accuracy and okay, got some indentation error, I guess. Okay, then violet syntax. Uh, fixed it, yes. So let's go with model fitting, model fit training uh, with a pause, and I'll just add this in history. So, okay, so it will take some time. I need to accelerate my uh, CPU up to GPU, uh, and I'll once this is done. So, you'll see uh, we have 10 steps of a pause where we are gradually uh, trying to increase the accuracy of this model. So we go from 63 to 68 to 77, uh, 71 to 77. So we're gradually increasing the accuracy of the model where we finally came to 81 uh, and then I was expecting 96 uh, but then we landed at 82 degrees uh, of accuracy which is fine we can go ahead with that. So next time I'm just importing matplot uh, pyplot as PLT. Okay, and I'll just give the colors labels. This is to you know. Uh, this is to visualize our data, visualize our training and validation model. So I have like four graphs plotted here to check my training and validation scores. So from what I could see from the graphs is um, there's definitely complexity. There is uh, a little bit of uh, okay. There is over. Writing. okay right so uh, if i were to improve this model further uh, there are quite a few ways uh, we could basically we could either add more data or we just have to reduce the complexity here there is not much complexity but yes maybe if we add more data uh, it could reduce uh, the errors we can increase the accuracy here. now i am importing cv2 uh, we'll give a test with our images I'll okay. The import CV2 is done. Uh, we have to do test image mm, CV2 and I'll create my image. So from Google, I'll just pick a cat image which I have it stored here uh, and I'll upload it here in the dynamic storage and I'll give the path for that. So once I have given the path, here you can see it. Uh, clearly not the size we wanted so i'll go ahead test image shape it is 902 by 1200 by 3 so i'll go ahead image underscore uh, sorry test underscore image equals uh, c2 and resize it to 2 things comma 2 physics and okay Oops, okay this is not imj's image Fair. Right, so we have resized it. Now we'll go ahead and reshape it once. Right, so reshaping it uh, by 1, 2, 3, 6, by 2, 3, 6, by 3. <coughs> now I'll go ahead, last command model dot predict and test image. Okay, oh, it's test input rather. And yes, if you see the array I got, I got as zero, which is how we trained our model. For if there's uh, if there's a category, it has to be zero. If there's a log image, you will get your output as one. So this basically concludes how we have tested trained the model so far. Uh, once we input an image in the model, we can have you know. Uh, have it identified either as a cat or a dog image with our D type uh, whatever output we are getting if it's zero uh, according to our training if it's zero you get it in the class of cats if it's one you get it in the class of dogs now um, fairly a simple project and if you uh, want to develop it further you can you know change its USB because uh, in current modern world problems if we go and implement this so that's not that big of a use case if you want to really, you know, you have trained the machine to identify if it's a dog or cat, but in a 
current world, if you want to really have a USB for it, you can go ahead and have a data set more bigger, um, probably less complex than this. And probably uh, if you want, instead of just cats and dogs, we can have a data set that differentiates uh, actual human person to an AI generated or uh, say a deep faked uh, image. So right now if I show you something, if I go to Google and I uh, look for this person does not exist and if you go on the site, you will uh, see that you have a, a randomly generated image of a person. If you refresh the site, you will get some other images of some other person. But uh, in reality, uh, none of these person actually exist. These are just uh, AI generated images. Or none of the images, uh, none of the person uh, shown on this site actually exists. So if you create a data set out of these uh, images and then you create a data set uh, of actual images uh, of, of actual people who exist, and if you try implementing this project on that, uh, then 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 is, uh, you can probably say that it has a good use case. You can you know differentiate between uh, real and fake identities. So yes, that is just a snippet of how we can use this in uh, current world problems, uh, this project in current world problems. And that was all from my side. Thank you for watching. Yes, and I'll see you next time.